this enormous beige beast of a Pentium 3 Dell Dimension is just about perfect in every way, except one. Oh no. And that's why today we're going to install a completely up-to-date Linux on it, and it's damn small, so stay tuned. And if you enjoy taking old computers and modern Linux, and uh, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. I love trying to install modern Linuxes on very old computers, but this thing is from the year 2000, and 25 years might be pushing it a bit, which is why we're going with a very special ultra lightweight distro, the recently reborn Damn Small Linux. The original Damn Small Linux came out in the mid 2000s and provided a fully featured Linux distro in an impressively small 50 megabytes. People used Damn Small Linux for tons of silly things back then like bootable business cards, and it was universally beloved by all. Unfortunately, this original Damn Small Linux petered out in 2008, but after a 16 year hiatus, Damn Small Linux has been reborn. And this new version has what I believe to be an even better and more ambitious goal to fit a usable, lightweight, modern Linux with a graphical desktop experience and applications on one single CD-ROM. But although it's easy to get this booting on comically old and limited computers, can it really give us a usable, modern experience? Well, there's only one way to find out. Right after this quick word about today's incredibly relevant sponsor, Boot.dev. I have a shameful secret. I never learned how to use Git properly. I've been pushing files to my frog find repository with the GitHub web interface. Well, boot.dev is an incredibly fun gamified platform to learn backend web development from start to finish in the Python and Go programming languages. And oh my God, this was the first Git course that immediately made Git make sense to me. I love how boot.dev not only breaks everything out into fun, easy to follow, and sometimes cheeky examples, but you gain experience points, levels, treasure chests, and all sorts of fun stuff that feels like an old school 90s RPG. I've also been going through the Python course, where the exercises follow along, building an old school text-based RPG. It's like they know me. Oh, and Boots is perhaps the best help slash snarky chatbot that I've ever seen. It's an AI powered bear wizard that's trained on each lesson, asking you questions to guide and prompt you into deeper understanding. There are a ton of wonderfully fun courses on things like Git, JavaScript, Python, Linux, Docker, object oriented programming. It's free to create an account, demo the courses, and even view all of the content in read only mode. So go to boot.dev and use my code actionretro to get 25% off your entire first year if you choose the annual plan. Becoming a member unlocks interactivity like in-browser coding, progress tracking, answer verification, and more. That's boot.dev and code action retro. And now let's try to boot this thing. So I just recently picked this thing up. I've been looking for a fast Pentium 3 for a while. This thing should have a 900 megahertz Pentium 3 256 megs of RAM, it has a DVD-ROM and a CD-RW, and I love this case design. It's actually the same case that a UMAX Macintosh clone uses. Before we boot this up, I am going to go into the inside and see if we can max out the memory to its 512 meg maximum. And I'm going to have to swap out this video card too. Yeah, the modern Linux kernel does not like Rage 128. So we're going to pop that out. And I happen to have this lovely one gigabyte AGP ATI Radeon HD 3650. Hilariously, this card gets external power through four pin Molex. All right, I have no idea if this video card works, so I guess let's find out. All right, well, we're gonna solve this dilemma by completely skipping plan B and plan C and plan D and go straight to the silliest possible solution, a PCI Express video card, a PCIe to PCI adapter and a PCI extender. Plug this into PCI slot right here, and Linux will definitely like this video card. All right, let's see if it boots with that jank installed. Oh yeah, look at that. 
GT440 VGA BIOS. It works. All right, let's see if we can get this old crusty spinning mechanical hard drive out of here. Good old Maxter 60 gigabytes. Let's pick an SSD for this thing using the world's only truly civilized method. Oh yeah, it's the wheel of SSDs. Let's see what we get. Also, this IDE cable has been slowly disintegrating, but I'm sure it's fine. All right, let's chuck in the damn small Linux install CD. All right, well, apparently neither one of these drives wants to actually read this CD. So let's do something totally normal and give it the drive out of an old Mac Pro. Oh yeah, this is turning into 100% pure jank, just the way I like it. Look at that, damn small Linux. All right, we'll button up this poor Dell once we get an install on here. But first, let's just make sure that everything actually works. And here we are successfully booted into damn small Linux's damn small live environment. And uh, we're using an impressive 95% of the CPU. Hmm. And I'll just breeze through this install. Hold disk, yep. Computer name will be Dimension. We'll set up some very strong and secure passwords. Definitely not use the same password for user account and root. That would be silly. All right, well, install complete. I think let's uh, shut this thing down and then try to button it up a little bit so it doesn't look so much like uh, garbage. Well, SSD is easy enough. And done. And I'm just going to reconnect our questionable optical drives because hopefully we'll never need those again. Which leaves us with video card. Obviously we can't in any way close this with this jank installed, but I may have found a solution. Look at this little card I found. It is a Radeon something or other. I think it has a gigabyte of VRAM. And I'm thinking what we can do is just uh, stick it in here like that and still close the case. I have liberated a faceplate from another video card. I think what would be funny is to uh, <laughs> install this in here upside down so the connector is facing up, just like so. Oh yeah, now that is some turbo jank. Look at that. Oh my God, it's so stupid. <laughs> and that's why I love it. Oh, please fit. Oh my God. <laughs> Look, I don't know why I'm like this. Sometimes it's just more fun to do things the stupid way. And look, it works just fine. Yeah, look at that. We are now using a totally minuscule portion of that CPU. Oh yeah, look at that. Look how snappy. All right, let's see here. Do we have Neo fetch? No. Screen fetch? No. Fast fetch? No, but we should be online. Let's do an update. We are pulling from the Debian repositories and obligatory Neo fetch here showing that we're Debian GNU Linux 12, which is what this is based on. Actually, this is based on Antics, running the Antics kernel, which itself is based on Debian. But let's take a look at what's installed by default because the big selling point of DSL is that there are apps included from this single CD-ROM install. We have multiple web browsers, NetSurf, which is a totally fine browser and should work swimmingly on here. Let's see, frogfind.com. Yeah, it sure does. But if we were daring enough to try, this does have Firefox. Honestly, I'm really surprised that Firefox even opened up and rendered this page, the damn small Linux homepage, though it is using probably a hundred percent of CPU. <laughs> yeah, look at that, CPU, 100%.
but honestly, a, a valiant showing here. All right, before we get too comfortable in here, I'd like to switch to a different desktop environment. We actually have a choice. We could press F1 to cycle through a couple different options. And I really like JWM, which is Joe's window manager, because it gives you a little bit more of a proper desktop look and feel with a start menu down here. We can go into control center and customize the look and feel a bit. Look at all this fun stuff. Beautiful. And my favorite open source first person shooter, Sourbrotten, is just an apt install away. Very curious how this runs on this Pentium 3. And since Sourbrotten has the best soundtrack of any video game ever, I have these lovely beige Harman Cardons hooked up. I doubt we'll get any kind of good audio out of here though. Oh look, it's trying. It's not happy though. Oh, we got audio. Oh, it's so good. All right, well, I don't know what's up with the colors here, but I do see it trying to initialize in this loading bar here, so it's not frozen. Oh my God, there, <laughs> it's trying. So of course this computer would be much better served as a, a Windows 98 gaming PC or something. Although I'm just obsessed with minimal distros that will run on extremely limited hardware, which is why I think distros like Tiny Core Linux, MX Linux, Antics, and damn small Linux are so damn cool. And I apologize to any Dell aficionados out there for the unspeakable things I've done to this one. In any event, if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more weird stuff like this, please subscribe down below and thank you very much for watching. And I just want to give a very special thank you to all of my Patreon supporters and channel members. Thank you so much, each and every one of you for supporting me and supporting this channel and all the weird stuff I do. I am so very grateful and I just could not do this without you.